Hi, I'm Mickey Barr, and I'm going to be describing today a series of nerve tractioning exercises for the upper extremity, uh, or the arms. The nerves of the upper extremity originate in the neck, and they travel through this collarbone space, out the armpit, and then branch off and travel down the arm all the way to the fingers. And I won't get too much into the anatomy of the nerves, but you can know that they begin in the neck, travel through this shoulder space, down the arm, and to the fingers. And if there's a nerve compression, you may feel numbness, tingling, uh, pins and needles type sensation, uh, or you may have something that's been diagnosed like a carpal tunnel. Uh, and so these exercises work to traction the nerves. It can also be thought of as a way of stretching them, although they don't truly stretch. The nerves in the body are kind of like a coiled telephone wire. And by doing these exercises, we're pulling on both ends of the nerve, and it has a way of uncoiling it. And so it does lengthen in a way, although it doesn't truly stretch. And so important here, and why I'm doing it seated cross-legged, with my butt on a pillow, so that my hips are propped up, is that I'm going to use the reference point of the wrist and the knee. That when the wrist and the knee are in contact, or when the wrist is above the knee, it lets me know that my arms are forward. And the arms need to be forward to spread the shoulder blades and pull them downwards. And by spreading the shoulder blades apart and moving them downwards, it creates a lengthening from the neck and the shoulder so that we're uh, tractioning the nerve in this space as well as what we do with the wrist and hand. And so I'm going to reach forward. My wrists are above my knees, and I'm going to think about moving them downwards. And I'm not allowing them to touch again, so it becomes almost an isometric forward and down, and what that does, that turns on my pec muscle and my lat muscle. And those are the muscles responsible for spreading the shoulder blades apart, protraction, and depressing them, moving them downwards. So pec and lat, the under armpit muscles. From there, I'm going to keep my shoulder blades in the space that they are, but I'm going to start moving the ball and socket joint, or the GH joint. And so from here, my palms are facing one another, I'm going to start to internally or medially rotate the ball and socket joint until my palms face the floor, and then they face outwards towards the sides of the room, and now my arms are fully internally rotated. From there, I'm going to flex the wrist and touch the fingertips together, and this becomes a radial nerve stretch or a large intestine meridian stretch. So this is for the radial nerve, which feeds the thumb and the index finger. If I keep the shoulder blades fixed, but then turn the ball and socket joint outwards, that my inner elbows are facing upwards towards the ceiling, and then I'm going to pull the wrist back and the fingers back, so wrist into extension, fingers into extension, this becomes a median nerve stretch. And this stretches the nerve that travels through the carpal tunnel here. From there, I'm going to keep my both shoulder blades and the ball and socket in place, but I'm going to rotate my forearms so that my fingers point upwards towards the ceiling. And this is also a median nerve stretch or a lung meridian stretch. I'm going to bend the elbows here, keeping my shoulders in place, as though I'm going to touch the fingers towards my collarbones. And they don't actually touch, but they're moving in that direction. And this becomes an ulnar nerve stretch. Uh, for the pinky, and so this could also be a heart meridian stretch in uh, TCM, traditional Chinese medicine. From here, I'm going to rotate the ball and socket. It has the effect of moving the elbows up, and then this is again for the ulnar nerve feeding the pinky or the pericardium meridian in uh, traditional Chinese medicine. This is neat because now my ball and socket joint and shoulder blades are in the right place that if I just straighten my elbows, flex the wrist and touch the fingers together, I end up back in the radial nerve stretch. If I rotate the ball and socket, pull the wrist back into extension, pull the fingers back, I end up at the median nerve stretch, rotate at the forearm or the elbow, so the fingers point more upwards towards the ceiling, also median nerve. Bend the elbows, I end up in ulnar nerve. And then rotate the ball and socket joint inwards, so the elbows lift, also the ulnar nerve. I feel this through the pinky edge and maybe a little bit on the uh, tricep side of my arm. And then if I straighten the elbows again back to radial, 
Externally rotate, fingers back, medial. Rotate at the elbow, also medial. Bend the elbow, ulnar. Turn the ball and socket, also ulnar. Radial, medial, medial, ulnar, ulnar. And it starts to have a flow. And all the while, I'm keeping my arms forward so my shoulder blades spread and there's a slight depression of the shoulder blades. And you can move through this cycle once it's memorized multiple times. And this has a way of flossing the nerves or tractioning the nerves. I also spoke to the corresponding meridians in traditional Chinese medicine. If you'd like to go a step further here, once you're in the nerve stretch, you can pump the hands a few times. And so I'm making a complete fist. The wrist is still flexed for the radial nerve, but I'm extending the fingers and flexing the fingers. Right? And you can do that a few times intentionally. I can switch to the median nerve stretch, and then I can pump the hands a few times. And this is definitely a stronger effect, but it can be very useful. I'm going to rotate to that second aspect of the median nerve. And pumping here gives me more sensation, especially in the right arm. I feel this through my right forearm and uh, a little bit into my right, um, almost middle finger. Bend the elbows, we end up in that ulnar nerve. A couple pumps. Rotate the ball and socket, this other aspect of the median nerve. Excuse me, the ulnar nerve. Feeding the pinky, pinky ulnar, or PU. That's what they taught me in massage school to remember it. And then return to the radial. And you can see that once it's memorized, it flows very nicely. This can be done standing, but I taught it seated today so that we could use the reference point of the wrist and the knee. So, enjoy.